Hello everyone, I'm Ernie and I am so glad you're here with us today. Today we are back at the Stagecoach Mill on this windy day. The wind is blowing 22 miles per hour with wind gusts up to 35 miles per hour. There are two projects that I want to get to and I want to get these done with wind or no wind and let's get to it. The first project that we are going to do today is we are going to take 200 grams of sulfide complex fire assay flux and we are going to put it in a clean crucible. We will fire up the charge and we will get the lead prill. We will cupel the lead prill to see if we get any silver or gold inside the lead prill. The reason is is because uh, at AU Miner 1, he brought up an excellent test that we should do and a test that I had done previously with my high litharge with flour to see if there was any silver or gold inside that litharge is because a lot of times litharge comes with silver naturally in it and Legends does sell some litharge that is gold and silver free. So we're going to do this test to see if there is any silver or gold inside this litharge. Our second test is we are going to take 300 grams of sulfide complex fire assay flux. And as you know, in our last project with 100 grams of sulfide, our lead pearl was, it was 206 grams. Well, potassium nitrate is supposed to reduce the size of the lead prill. So we're going to add in 25% of potassium nitrate, which is 125 grams. We're going to mix it with the sulfide complex fire assay flux. We're going to put it in a clean crucible. We will fire up the charge and we're going to see just what the lead prill weighs. And so we can determine how this sulfide complex fire assay flux is really reacting so we can use it in the proper way when we do our projects in our in our fire assay projects so let's get to it As we get started, I wanted to show you a safety feature that I had put on my tripod. I added this piece of ore on for weight because of the wind. I don't want to take a chance and have the wind blow my tripod over and break my camera. Uh, one of the uh, other YouTubers that I follow, uh, he, had, <laughs> he had his camera on his tripod and the wind blew his tripod over and it broke his $1,200 lens and we can't afford for that so I encourage you to be safe and keep your equipment safe so you will not lose anything due to the wind or get anything damaged okay we are going to start with 200 grams of sulfide complex fire assay flux in a brand new clay crucible the purpose of this project and experiment is we want to find out if there is any gold or silver inside the litharge that is in this flux. We will take this flux in the crucible and place it in the furnace, fire it up, and we will get the lead prill and we will cupel it to see if we get any gold or silver inside the lead prill. We have our charge in our clay crucible in our furnace and we're going to fire this up and get it up to 2100 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, while this is cooking, we are going to start the second project for the day. In this project, we are going to take 300 grams of sulfide complex fire assay flux and put it in this brand new clay crucible.
Now we will add in 125 grams of potassium nitrate. The purpose for potassium nitrate is to reduce the size of the lead perill. In our last project, when we used 300 grams of sulfide complex fire assay flux plus 100 grams of sulfides, we got a lead perill of 206 grams. By adding in 125 grams of potassium nitrate, we are going to see how the lead prill will be reduced down to size by doing this experiment. Now, let's take our sulfide complex fire assay flux and our potassium nitrate and mix it thoroughly together. Okay, let's get back to the first project of today. On this 42 degree day, we want to heat up our cone mold so we won't get any thermal shock. Our cone mold is at 293 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, let's get the second project of the day into the furnace. I want to take this moment to show you why I put the crucible on the left side of the furnace because the flame is coming in at an angle, at a 45 degree angle, and the flame will circle around the furnace and it will circle around the crucible. What happens when you have your crucible in front of the flame, the flame will burn through the clay crucible and your material will leak out. This crucible here was used three times in our first three projects and you can see how the fire has been burning through this crucible and it was starting to leak out in our last project. Okay our cone and our cone mold has cooled down and we are going to get our cone out of the cone mold and we'll see how large our lead prill will be. Let's get our lead prill cleaned up and weighed up. In our last project, when we had 200 grams of sulfide complex fire assay flux plus 100 grams of sulfide, the lead prill weighed 71 grams. And this one here, for whatever reason, weighs 73 grams. Okay, let's pour our second project of the day. Wow, I can already see that this is going to be amazing. Look how small that cone is. We have our 73 gram lead prill cut in half and we are going to start our cupellation process. 
as we start our cupellation process, I want you to keep an eye on the cupel on the right because this is the cupel that gets most of the oxygen as we blow air into it. And you will see that this lead frill will oxidize more and it will become smaller quicker than the cupel on the left. Let's get back to the second project of the day. The cone and the cone mold has cooled down and we are going to dump it out and we are going to see what size our lead prill will be after adding potassium nitrate into the mix. Here is this lead prill. And remember our last project, that lead prill weighed 206 grams, and that was with 100 grams of sulfide in the mix. Our lead prill weighs six grams. So by adding 125 grams of potassium nitrate into 300 grams of sulfide complex fire assay flux, we lost 200 grams of lead prill. I slowed this video clip down so you could see the cupel that is on the right. You can see that lead prill turning black and that's the oxidation taking place because it's getting more oxygen than the cupel on the left. And it's that oxidation that needs to happen so the cupel will absorb the oxidation and shrink the size of the lead prill. I want to take this moment to show you my cupellation apparatus and I'm using a shop vac and I'm using the exhaust port to blow the air into the furnace and it's that air that's coming out of the shop vac and going into the furnace that is bringing some oxygen into the mix and this is what causes the lead prill to oxidize and the cupel to absorb the oxidation. You can see that we did get a silver bead in this fire assay and it's an indication that there is silver in the litharge that is in the sulfide complex fire assay flux. Okay, I took the six gram lead prill from our second project of today and I put it in a 15 gram cupel and we're going to see if we get any silver inside this lead prill as well. And yes, we did get a silver bead inside the six gram lead prill from our second project of the day. Here is our second cupel from the first project of today. Here are our three cupels from our projects for today. And the third cupel, actually the second cupel from our first project does have a silver bead in it and is smaller than the first one. But we did get silver in every lead prill that we cupelled today. Here are the two silver beads under the magnifying glass from the first project of today. And here are the two silver beads under the microscope from the first project of today. And these two silver beads weighs 0 0.006 of a gram. 
And here is the silver bead from our 300 grams of sulfide complex fire assay flux and 125 grams of potassium nitrate. And here is that same silver bead under the microscope. And this silver bead weighs 0 0.003 of a gram. Well, this wraps up this episode of us working with our sulfide complex fire assay flux from Legends. And boy, the, this, these two projects answer a lot of questions for me and also led me to think some more about it too. And I don't know about you, and if you have any comments about what we did, I encourage you to write to me in a comment below and tell me what you think and if we should do something different to try to uh, probably get the silver out of this. I'm not sure what we can do, but any how if you enjoyed this episode I encourage you to spank that like button and to share this on your channel and I want to say if you enjoy these fire assay projects I would like to encourage you to go to the description box and there you will find a link to all my fire assay projects that way you can watch them you can share them and you can learn and grow along with all of us and we're so thankful that you're here and if you haven't subscribed to our channel I would like to encourage you to subscribe and to become part of our AU family. We would love to have you in the family. We are so thankful that you're here. We deeply appreciate your support and we will see you on the next one.